It's been a disaster of a season for the Diamondbacks, but their AAA affiliate, the Reno Aces, won their division and will be in the playoffs as this Reno squad has many players who could be on the Major League team as soon as next year. And they're going to be taking on the Albuquerque Isotopes, the AAA affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. Brendan Rodgers plays for the Isotopes. He's the number one overall prospect in baseball. However, he is actually injured for the series and didn't play. On the mound today for Albuquerque, he's going to be Alec Asher as he strikes out Joe Adele. Pretty rough playoff start for Joe Adele. As here's John Duplantier on the mound. Definitely a really promising prospect who could be on the Major League team next year. As he gets Lindstrom down on the ugly curveball. Now one out, top two for Alex Healy, and he rips that one into left field, and the left fielder is unable to make the play as Healy decides to be a little bit aggressive, and it doesn't work out as he's gunned down at second. Now Abreu up, bottom two, it's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's a bomb, and the Albuquerque isotopes are on the board. one nothing lead for the home run by Abreu. Definitely not a great start for the aces, and definitely not what John Duplantier was hoping for, but other than that, he dominated today. Now let's go top three. Here's the five foot eight, 152 pound second baseman, Fuzzy Milkich, and he launches an absolute bomb into right field. And now, as soon as he hits it, he's two years older, and he's also 6'2, 220. But still, what a shot from someone so small and not known for his power. Take another look at that one. What a beauty from Fuzzy. And just like that, we are tied up at one apiece. Now let's go bottom three as he's more blind than Helen Keller. I don't know what he was swinging at. Ugly pitch right there. Here's Domingo Leba up in the fourth. As that one drops for a no-out single. Very next batter, Pavin Smith, the best hitter in all of AAA this season, and likely the everyday first baseman next year, rips a double. Domingo Leba scores up standing from first, and Reno takes a 2-1 to one lead. And then the batter after that, Alex Healy, with the bat drop. And just like that, the Reno Aces are up 4-1 to one that quickly. A two-run bomb for Healy, his first, obviously, of the postseason. What a shot right there. And then the very next batter, the third baseman, Drew Ellis, goes this time to left field. And now it's 5-1 to one as Alec Asher is getting absolutely rocked here in this fourth inning. Now bottom four, Leba to Milkic to Pavin Smith. 6-4, three double play for Verino Aces. Fifth inning now, Domingo Leba. He's just a window shopper because he's just looking. Nice pitch right there from Asher. That would end his day. Now let's go sixth inning. Here's Drew Ellis with the home run earlier. He gets that one off the wall for a two-out double as Reno trying to get some extra insurance runs, but it wouldn't happen as Fuzzy Milkich. He's just a window shopper. Say it with me, kids, because he's just looking. Bottom six now. John Duplantier still in the game as Joe Adele able to track that one down. Adele acquired earlier in the season from the Angels. He has a ton of potential. Definitely didn't showcase it here these first few games against the Isotopes. Now seventh inning. Here's for catcher Carson Kelly going deep. Kelly was one of the big parts of the Paul Goldschmidt deal. Of course, another part of that deal, Luke Weaver, was traded to Tampa Bay and part of a Wander Franco deal. So now it's 6-1. to one. Here's for former Heisman Trophy winner Kyler Murray, who has officially permanently chose baseball even though he was the number one pick by the Diamondbacks, and he'll definitely have some mixed reactions at Chase Field when he's with the Diamondbacks as Joe Adele goes down swinging, another batter goes down swinging. Here's Nunez going down on the high changeup. Here's Alex Healy now going down looking as it's a strikeout parade at this point. Bottom eight, John Duplantier still in the game. Nice base hit right there. Kyler Murray is one who fields it, but it's going to be a no-out double as the Isotopes trying to start a rally. Now two outs, and it wouldn't be meant to be as Fuzzy Milkich makes the play. Still 6-1, to one, headed into the ninth inning. Not looking good for the Albuquerque Isotopes. Here's John Duplantier up with two outs. It looks like he's going to stay in the game, and he actually gets a base hit right there. The Diamondbacks pitchers have done a great job of hitting the ball this season, and he does that. Now bottom nine, can Duplantier finish it off? He gets one batter. He gets two batters. 
and John Duplantier would get the final one as all three batters go down on strikes. John Duplantier strikes out the side. What a performance from him. Nine innings, only allowing one run, and the Reno Aces get the win off of the complete game from John Duplantier, trying to prove that he is Major League ready. Obviously, he got the win. Alec Asher gets the loss. Now, on to Game 2. This series is a best of five, so the magic number here is three. Now, the magic number for Reno is two. They just have to win two of their next four, and they are good to go. Ryan Castellani on the mound today for the Isotopes, only 21 years old, really promising player. As for the Aces, it's going to be Tuki Saint, who we saw pitch pretty recently. I believe those are actually his major league stats on the year. His ERA in AAA was in like the twos. I know he did struggle in the majors with the Braves. Bottom one, nice strikeout for Tuki. Now top two, two outs. That one is high and it's awfully deep. But it would be caught all for nothing. Nice play right there by, I believe, Abreu hit the home run back in game one. Now, bottom two, Fuzzy Milkich bobbles it, but he does make the play. Numerous bobbles, to say the least, from Milkich as 97 miles an hour. Nevin has absolutely no chance. He looks at one go right by and can't really blame him. Fourth inning now, and the shutout is over. That's an RBI single for, I'm pretty sure, Pavin Smith. Domingo Leba will score, and it's one to nothing. Reno Aces will take the lead. Then, next batter, Alex Healy. He's shopping gap. Smith is going to score from first, and this one is now two to nothing. Healy's going to try to head for third. Being aggressive didn't work last time, but it does here as Alex Healy gets an RBI triple, making it 2 nothing. Bottom four, Milkic bobbles it again, but he does make the play just in time. Still a shutout here for Tuki Toussaint as the Albuquerque Isotopes trying to change that, and that might help as Kyler Murray runs right by the ball, runs scores, and Albuquerque will cut the lead in half. Now it's 2-1. to one. Nevin once again going down on a 97-mile-per-hour fastball. He has not had a fun day. Here's Pavin Smith, more blind than Helen Keller. I don't know what he was swinging at. Third strike out of the day for Ryan Castellani. Bottom six, nice K for Tuki Toussaint, who had 14 in the game we looked at a few weeks ago. Abreu goes down looking, and I believe that would end Tuki Toussaint's day after six. Really solid innings, only allowing one run on five hits. Now, any number seven, here's Fuzzy Milkich with the base hit. Very unnecessary slide for the second baseman, wasn't really needed. And then the batter after that, Carson Kelly rips a base hit. So now 2-1 and one out for Reno as they try to extend their lead, but it would be all for nothing as Genio Kercatero grounds into the double play. I'm pretty sure that was Kercatero who grounded into the double play. Now here's Welker going down on the outside pitch from Robbie Scott. Eighth inning, now here's Pavin Smith ripping another one. Right fielder totally misses it, and he just stands there. And Domingo Leba would score. Now it's 3-1 to one, Reno. They double their lead to two, trying to prevent the Isotopes from making a comeback. And that shot from Alex Healy would certainly help. What a start to this postseason for Healy. He has been absolutely dominant. He wants to play on this major league team next year, and he is absolutely proving himself right now. Now, bottom eight, Fuzzy Milkic bobbles it again. This time, he cannot make the play his third botch of the game. It is going to be ruled a base hit, but it doesn't matter as Hilliard goes down. Looking. So, your score, I believe, is 4-1 to one as Silvino Bronco on for the save. Those are his stats, I believe, last year in 2018 with the Diamondbacks. As the first at bat, Domingo Leba botches it, and that's going to be a single, or that's going to be ruled an error by Leba. And then the next batter rips a single into left, so two on, no outs. The tying run is up at the dish for Albuquerque. Now two outs, full count, and this game is still alive, everyone. That's going to be a gap shot, two run double, and now it's just a one run game. Four to three now, can Silvino Bronco close it out? And the answer is yes, as Kyler Murray is under it. And the Reno Aces take a commanding 2-0 series lead. Another really quality start, this time from Tuki Toussaint, who also wants to prove himself on this Major League team. Ryan Castellani with a loss. He was solid 
as now Game 3, the Reno Aces can get the sweep and eliminate the Albuquerque Isotopes once and for all. As on the mound today for the Aces is Todd Woodruff, the number 5 prospect in baseball, only 19 years old. All three of these top three pitchers for the Aces are legit potential all-star prospects, and they all could be in the Major League team next year. Meanwhile, for the Isotopes is Riley Pint, who's also a really solid prospect. As first at bat of the game is a single for Kyler Murray, who is not great here in the playoffs. Joe Adele, not a base hit yet. He strikes out, and then another strikeout for the Reno Aces. Pavin Smith sliding to first, but it doesn't matter as the Isotopes get out of a first inning. Now second inning, the cleanup hitter Hilliard gets cleaned up by Todd Woodruff. And then Healy, he's just a window shopper because he's just looking. Bad strikeout right there for Alex Healy. Now third inning, this is where things start to get interesting. As that one goes into right, the right fielder, I believe that's Healy, totally misses it. I think that one off his noggin, and that'll be a no-out double. And that'll come back to bite the Reno Aces later. Next batter, two-run dinger just over the head of Joe Adele. And the Albuquerque Isotopes, I believe, take their first lead since they were up 1-0 in Game 1. An absolute bomb right there. Not too long later, this time it goes to right. Alex Healy can just watch. And now it's 3-0 Albuquerque Isotopes as they are absolutely clobbering the ball off of Woodruff. That's Tauchman, the leadoff hitter of a home run. Fuentes goes down swinging. This should have ended the inning because of a Healy drop, but it didn't as Healy has caused one run because that two-run shot would have only been one run. And now here is three runs he has now caused off of another two-run denier. Why not make it four runs that Alex Healy has caused? This time Nunez goes yard, and now it's six to nothing Reno or six to nothing Albuquerque. If Alex Healy just caught the ball, then it would only be two nothing. As Todd Woodruff goes down, looking not helping his cause. Fourth inning, here's the shortstop Domingo Leba launching an absolute bomb. You might as well call him Kim Jong Un because he's launching nukes. Reno Aces trying to come back, but obviously. The Isotopes have to play their best game of the year, and they're definitely doing that up to this point. Other than that disaster of an inning, in the first, second, fourth, and fifth innings, I think we're all perfect for Todd Woodruff. Just the third inning was a mess. He finished with five innings, allowing six runs as a strikeout right there. Now Drew Ellis is up, and the shortstop of a backhanded throw. Excellent play, but he is safe. So now... It wouldn't really matter as that one would be a dribbler off of the bat of Matt Skurzer, I believe. Now sixth inning, new pitcher, same result. I believe that's Mark Ripresinski on the mound. And another home run for the Albuquerque Isotopes, making it 7-1 to one as Joe Adele strikes out yet again. Seventh inning now, that one is going to be a 3-6-1 double play. Don't get to say that too often. You know, infield is more chemistry than a science project. Now bottom seven, here's the third baseman, Drew Ellis, with a ground rule double, making it runners in scoring position, one out for Fuzzy Milkich. That one could have easily been two, but a nice play by the second baseman. One run does score, however, as it's 7-2. to two. Nunez goes down swinging. Now bottom 8-4, the pinch hitter, Juniel Carcatero, as he rips a base hit. That's going to be a ground rule double, starting off the bottom of the eighth inning. So now with one out, Joe Adele up at the dish. He does not have a base hit yet in the series, and that would change. As Adele does get the base hit, but that's only because Caracatero had some bad base running. And they'll classify it as a base hit for whatever reason. So Joe Adele finally on the board. However, it wouldn't really matter as Domenico Leva goes down swinging, ending the 8th inning. ninth inning, now Khan in the game. Nice strikeout right there. Abreu goes down swinging. Bottom 9 here, Alex Healy. After two really good day games, this one was pretty dreadful for him. Here's Drew Ellis, the third baseman, trying to keep hope alive here of two outs, ripping an absolute bomb into left field, his second home run of the postseason, making it 7-3. to three. Would it matter? No. Nice play by the second baseman to get Fuzzy Milkic out. And Verino aces get the loss, 7-3. to three. The Albuquerque Isotopes keep it alive. They do need to win the next two games. Riley Pint with a win. Todd Woodruff is the one who gets the loss. A disastrous third inning for Reno, allowing six runs. 
So the Aces would end up winning Game 4. Now they're taking on the Nashville Sound. I believe this is the St. Louis Cardinals AAA affiliate in the second round. And the series is tied at 2-2. So next episode is going to be a do-it-all, do-or-die Game 5.